Hey folks, believe it or not, I'm back here to talk a little bit about the light box from Vans. I intended to get this out about eight months ago, back when I actually built it, and just didn't, life got in the way and made excuses. Uh, in that time, unfortunately, the computer I was using crashed, and I lost a lot of the footage of the, especially the prep portion, I have most of the assembly stuff. Um, I'll put that towards the end of the video here, so if you're not that interested in the time lapse of that build process, then you can just kind of skip over that. But up front, what I'm going to do is talk about some of the stuff that I did a little bit different in the light box. So stay tuned and enjoy. Alright, so the first thing that you'll notice that I did is I just took a white piece of like butcher paper and I put it across the back. Uh, the reason I did that is I just don't like seeing the reflection of the light strip when it's hanging. So this was a uh, thin enough butcher strip that it still illuminated the lighting, as you could see from the front video at the intro there. But it kind of eliminates seeing those streams of the lighting. So that was a small thing, but um, just something I did a little different. The other thing I did different is the light strip itself. Uh, Vans includes one in the kit that's an orange LED light strip. I happen to have a one of the Philips Hue LED light strips that you could change colors on and stuff laying around the house. So I ended up electing to use that so that I could change the colors. Uh, I'm also this way able to set it up with a, um, a scene with my house basically. So anytime I walk in the, the garage, the motion sensor kicks on the garage lights, but it also kicks on the sign light here. So um, it, Certainly not necessary. I mean, I think the light strip costs a hundred bucks. Uh, it's kind of a cool feature to be able to change the colors. There's like green, go red. Well, you basically have pretty much any color you could desire to go. You could even do white if you wanted to do just a white backlighting on it. Um, so I still have the orange set up, but then I like the green as well. So I kind of have both of those set up. The other thing that I, that I ran into was this LED strip light, for whatever reason, I don't know if the process on it was not properly treated on the back of the light strip, it's got an adhesive strip that you're just supposed to be able to remove and, and stick to the surface, but that, uh, but that strip did not stick to the light. Basically, it's just a super slick on the back side of the light there. So I actually even tried originally to, once that didn't work, I attempted to use like a JB Weld type of thing, a two-part and uh, did a quick curing, mounted it, let it cure overnight, and with some weight on it and everything, it still ended up just uh, peeling right off. Anyway, so that didn't work, so what I decided, I just have some of these little adhesive strips uh, that are made for running cable ties through, just cable organizers is what they are that I bought on Amazon a long time ago, and. So I just adhered a bunch of those every so often and ran a zip tie through and it holds the light strip perfectly fine. So then on the side hole over here, I just ran the regular hole that they tell you to run. I didn't end up throwing the grommet in. I just lined this control box up and put an adhesive under it and mounted it to the bottom so that that way it'll feed the cable right through that hole works out perfect. If you'll notice that the box itself is upside down, it's got the adhesive strip on here. The reason I didn't do that is I drilled the hole first and once I then realized the height of the box, it was going to throw that off. So I was either going to have to expand the size of the hole or if I put it upside down, it actually mounted perfectly. So that's why I did it upside down and just put new adhesive strips. The other thing is it happens to give me the QR code for the home kit if I ever needed to add that at some point down the road. So those were little things that I did inside the box, nothing too crazy or exceptional. But the thing I think is coolest is what I'm going to show you here on the back. On the back, once I finished the light box, one of the big things I was trying to figure out is how I was going to mount this thing up to my garage wall. So I was thinking of running some sort of wire between two of these screws on the back. And uh, I just, I didn't really like any of the ideas I was kind of coming up with and uh, so I talked to my dad and he was helping me look around and he actually came across this little system so I'll show you what I put on the back here first. What this is is it's a, I'll include the link in the description below, they sell them on Amazon, I happen to buy it at Meijer locally, but it's a French cleat design 
where you have two of these brackets, one that you mount onto the wall and it includes a little bubble level in it so you can make sure you get it nice and level on your wall. Uh, and then this piece you mount to the back of the box here. And what you have is now you have another beveled piece on the back of the wall on your garage wall or wherever you're hanging it. And then all you have to do is just slot that right into it very easy, basically can't screw it up. It's, you don't have to worry about trying to level this. It's basically going to be automatically leveled as long as you get this mounted level and you get the uh, piece on the wall mounted level. It's automatically leveling at that point. So uh, I got the 12 inch length and it works out perfectly. As you can see, it spans these holes. So it came with three holes already installed. Uh, one thing to keep out uh, an eye out for is when I was at the store, I noticed that the uh, newer kits that this company makes that I bought it from, they now have a bunch of pre-drilled holes all along the length. I don't know if those are going to by chance line up or not. In my case, these three didn't, so I, I centered the center hole because it was already a center point for me, and then all I did was I just match drilled my two outer holes and that basically gave me three points uh, and it spanned it perfectly, gave me good edge distance on both sides, kept it nice and center. So super easy to hang and uh, looks great. If you don't see anything hanging off the back, if you want to take it down, it's really easy to take down as well. And here it is mounted to the back. Yeah, again, you can see those three holes lined up perfectly. I got a nice straight reference point using those holes. All I did, just like you would do any kind of other match drilling on the aircraft, uh, I just drew basically a center line on the back side with Sharpie and then I lined it up on the front side here uh, and, and just matched drill through the holes in the back of the box. Here you can see where I've got the other bracket mounted to the wall. All you got to do is take and line that box up and you've got yourself mounted perfectly level and all you have to do is worry about shifting left or right if you need to if it's a little off center left or right you can adjust that as i said earlier i lost some of the footage of the prep work but this kit was actually a really well put together kit by vans one of the things i really like about it and you'll see as we kind of go through is that it really gives you the opportunity to try out pretty much every type of riveting technique that you want to use. And I really like that they also included all of the hardware you'd need to basically do the kit with either solid rivets or blind rivets. So if you're building an RV-12, it's still a great kit because you can just build the whole thing with blind rivets. Uh, if you're building a traditional RV with the solid rivets, you get lots of solid rivet practice. But if you also wanted to do some blind rivets, you can do those as well. And they include everything in the kit. Now the biggest difficulty was actually filing out where those letters were cut out into the front of the sign. Once you get past that part though, it's just a lot of tedious time with the, you know a, a file or, or Dremel tool or some sort of uh, deburring tool. And once you get those cleaned out, then from there it was a pretty standard process. I mean at this point, those of you watching my channel have seen that I've already built pretty well at this point the entire tail. So this was pretty basic sheet metal stuff but this was a great project or would be a great project for somebody still not sure maybe you've done one or two of the other practice projects and this is kind of the, the final culmination you end up with a really cool sign you get to hang on your garage door so right here i mean i already installed the nut plates as you saw now i'm just putting on those angle pieces onto the front of the sign the other thing it's maybe a little difficult with this kit is that it does not give you good step-by-step -step directions. There are instructions with it, but what's nice about it is that it gives you the opportunity to really do the sign however you want. You could have the sign screw on to the front of the box and have those screws present, or in my case, I wanted to have the solid rivet face, so I'm solid riveting those angle irons to the front of the sign but you could have just as easily put the nut plates on there and, and drilled those holes on the front of the sign to do the screws. So I like that, again, they give a lot of flexibility. The other thing that you have the option of, if you want to put this sign somewhere in the center of your shop uh, or wherever you're putting it, you can actually order an additional 
face with that Vans aircraft and you could end up having two of those, one on each side of the sign and have it portray in both directions. So now I'm just putting the sidewalls on. At this point, I've still been able to squeeze pretty much every one of these rivets. You can see that I'm skipping the center rivet on these sidewall brackets, and that's just because I don't have the reach with that squeezer to do those. So I'll, I'll come back to that here in a minute. So now on this top panel here, what I'm doing, because again, as you get into, once you place this on top of the sign, it's just going to be too tight of an area to be able to get a squeezer in there. So I'm going to end up back riveting. So you can see I put the back rivet tape on there. I've got the rivets in. And now I'm just going to, actually I said the top, I guess it's the bottom of the sign there. But now I've got my back rivet set and I'm just going to back rivet along the edge of where the sign goes. And that allows me to back rivet both the side walls onto the bottom as well as the whole front piece of the sign. Once those are done, you'll see I'll stand it up on end and I'll rivet those two middle uh, pieces as well that I couldn't quite get to. And there I was just a little bit shallow on the rivets. I didn't get them quite set enough, so that's where I just went back through and, and reset just an, an extra little hit or two on each rivet to, to get that proper depth. So again here I'm, I'm taping these rivets up. I end up uh, squeezing these. I don't back rivet these just because I had the access where that bracket is that uh, I just felt it was easier to squeeze them rather than back rivet them. So that was the only reason that I, I kind of changed my mind here. So again, the sign goes together really pretty simply. Uh, you've got decent access to, to most everything. As I get to this top piece here, now you're going to see that I don't have the space to do the back riveting anymore. I, I just don't have enough room for that back rivet set and the gun to get in there. So once I put this on the top of the sign, I'm going to end up doing some bucking. So like I said, you really get good exposure to all of the different techniques. I used a squeezer. You could do a hand or rivet squeezer. Uh, I did some back riveting and I'm using the bucking bar uh, here shortly to buck these last little rivets up at the front that you just don't really have good access to otherwise. So there you go with the bucking bar, just getting those rivets in there set. And again, if you wanted more bucking practice, you could do it all with a bucking bar even if you wanted. So again, it's, it's really flexible and kind of up to you how you want to work that. Unfortunately, I lost the footage with the LED light installation, but here in a second, I'm going to put the back cover on. And thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment below if you have any questions.